So we just checked out the smaller Galaxy Tab A9. Now we're checking out the larger plus version, the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. It's still not available in that many countries yet for some reason. It's a little confusing on the naming because this larger version is replacing the Galaxy Tab A8. The smaller A9 is replacing the A7 Lite. But pricing is just over $300 for the base model. I believe there's a 5G or a cellular version as well. Comes in three different colors, silver, graphite, and the one shown here is Mystic Navy. It's got an 11 inch TFT LCD display with 1920 by 1200 resolution with 90 Hertz refresh rate. This one also has a different processor than the smaller A9. This one's powered by a Snapdragon 695 processor. So it should have slightly better performance. You've got the option of four gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of storage or eight gigabytes with 128. You can also expand the storage with a micro SD card up to one terabyte. Nice thing is it still has a headphone jack and you've got a quad speaker setup with Dolby Atmos. So two speakers on each side. Inside the box, USB-C to USB-C charging cable, micro SD card or SIM card removal tool. Okay, I wasn't sure what the navy color was going to look like. I feel like it looks pretty nice in person. You can see this section here is made of aluminum and then plastic over here on the edge. You've got your two speakers on each side, charging port on the bottom. I feel like they could have put the headphone jack in a different spot. You can sort of see it there on the bottom corner. Power and volume button on the right hand side or on the top, depending on how you hold it. Rear facing camera looks pretty similar to the Galaxy Tab A8 up there in the corner. You also now have pogo pins on the bottom. I don't believe you had that on the Galaxy Tab A8. You can see the size of the bezels going all the way around the edges. Not too bad, really. When setting up, you've got the option of face unlock, pin, password, and pattern. Of course, you've got your Google Assistant stuff. Of course, you have the option of dark or light theme. Looks like it's still downloading some of the apps, but you can see the wallpaper on here is very similar to the S9 series. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the Galaxy Tab A8. Not a huge difference. It's a little closer to the Tab S9 FE, but it's just a hair larger than that one too. Just like the Galaxy Tab A8, you're not able to use an S Pen on here, unfortunately. As far as storage goes, it's using about 35% of the 64 gigabytes. So obviously you'll probably want to get the 128 gigabyte version if possible. Pretty typical on the apps that are pre-installed. So far I've just added Geekbench 6. Doesn't look like they add a lot of apps on here, which is good because there's not a lot of storage. Good thing is, looks like you can uninstall some of the apps that you won't be using. It also lets you switch between adaptive and standard motion smoothness, which is basically just changing it from 90 hertz to 60 hertz if you want to save battery. Now to me, even though this is more of a budget tablet, I feel like the screen quality on here looks plenty good enough for most people. It's also a wide by now one, so you can watch at least full HD playback resolution for apps like Netflix. Kind of surprising, you can only go up to 1080p resolution for YouTube videos. A lot of the times it'll let you do upscaled, but not on this one for some reason. I wasn't really expecting this, but you do get Samsung Dex on here. Definitely nice to have if you want your tablet to feel a little closer to a laptop or regular PC. Unfortunately, just like the Tab S9 FE, you don't have video out, so you won't be able to use an HDMI adapter with a TV or external monitor with this tablet. It's currently on Android 13, One UI 5.1.1. Nice thing is if you don't have the official keyboard for the Tab A9 Plus, you can always use a third party keyboard like this one from Logitech, which actually fits pretty good with this tablet. I wouldn't go much larger than this one though. It also has some nice shortcuts along the top that definitely come in handy. The software on here is going to be very similar to other Galaxy tablets. Left of the home screen, you've got Google Discover or Samsung News. But in the notification shade, you've got most of your typical stuff like Wi-Fi, sound, Bluetooth, auto rotate, airplane mode, power saving, location, link to Windows, screen recorder, quick share. Nice thing is you do get Samsung Dex on this one. You've got Smart View, Nearby Share. Eye Comfort Shield, Do Not Disturb, Call and Text on Other Devices, Dolby Atmos, Scan QR Code, Modes. Plus you can add more stuff like Extra Dim, Take Screenshot, Secure Folder, and Samsung Kids. You can also see you have a taskbar down here at the bottom, which is just all the apps you have down here at the bottom from your home screen, which also makes it a little easier to do split screen or some multitasking. You can do split screen or a floating window, depending on where you drag it. 
seems to work pretty good on here. You can tap in the middle to switch sides or just drag it over to change the sizes. Now, as far as performance goes, it looks like it's a little more powerful than the smaller Galaxy Tab A9, just when looking at the Geekbench scores, but it's not by a huge margin. Overall, I feel like it should have plenty of power to do most basic things that you would need to, including some multitasking. Gaming is gonna be fairly similar to the smaller A9, maybe a little smoother overall. I feel like most people will enjoy playing games on here like Asphalt 9 and PUBG Mobile. It didn't seem to have any overheating issues in the graphics didn't seem to stutter too much in my testing. It's got the same battery size as the Galaxy Tab A8, 7,040 milliamp hours, only 15 watt charging with this one instead of 45 watts like some of their more high-end tablets. I also ran my typical battery drain test to see how long this one would last and it lasted just over six hours. So just under what the Galaxy Tab A8 lasted, but keep in mind, this is a more extreme usage. So you can easily get a couple days use with mixed usage, especially if you turn the screen brightness down. The speakers on here actually sound really good, especially for a budget tablet like this. And you've got a quad speaker setup with Dolby Atmos, so two speakers on each side. Nice thing is it still has a headphone jack. Doesn't really have a lot of bass, but typically tablets don't. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. It's got an 8 megapixel camera on the back, 5 megapixel on the front, so a little bit better than the smaller A9. The camera app on here is pretty simple. You've got portrait, photo, video, and in more you've got food, panorama, pro, night, and hyperlapse. For video recording, you can shoot up to full HD or 1080p at 30 frames per second. The rear camera on here is not too bad in my studio lighting. Here's a few samples just to give you an idea of what to expect on the Tab A9 Plus. As you can see, the video quality appears to be slightly better than the Tab A8. And if I can still remember how bad the camera quality was on the Tab A8 from a couple years ago, probably not a good sign. It's not gonna have the best quality out there, far from it, but I still like to test everything out as much as possible. Hopefully this gave you a little closer look at the Tab A9 Plus, and I probably have more tablet comparisons I'm working on right now than ever before. So keep an eye out for a lot of those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.